shot and killed when I was five. Actually, I was four when he was shot, five when he died. My dad was what you call ruined, as I said. He had gotten everything he wanted. Had all the drugs, well served, that's what they were doing back then. He had the money, not his own, but when he ran out of money, he went to get more from where that came from, my grandmother. He just couldn't stand to tell him no, I guess. And that cost him his life and some of hers too. He was shot in the stomach, then he said they, never saying who they were, drove him around and tried to wait for him to bleed to death. Well, let me tell you how I remember, from a four-year-old's perspective. My grandmother didn't sleep well at night because both my grandfather and my dad would stay out all night and not come home till the wee hours of the morning. So she never slept well, being she was concerned if they would actually make it home at all. Whenever I was over, I slept in the bed with my grandmother. I remember this one night, my grandmother got up to go to the kitchen. Just as she got out the room, there was a knock at the side window. That's all I remember. Then somebody whispered, Mama, let me in. Mind you, I don't even recall ever seeing my father in person, nor have I ever seen a photograph of him with me nor my brother. So this whisper is the only recollection I would have of him alive. Mama, let me in. Want to see him so bad, I woke up to tell her. Mama Dorothy, my daddy say let him in. She was bewildered by what I told her being he had a key to let himself in. She simply said, he did, in that grandmother-like voice. I could see the excitement light up in her face that daddy was home. I assumed after that, she thought he would come in the door. However, my grandmother kept it like a mortuary around there with all that fancy ass funeral home furniture. That's what I called it. So I was glued to her ass after that. I wasn't about to go back in that bedroom by my little four-year-old bad self. She was gonna have to come in that room with me. And she did. On her way down the hall, we heard another knock at the side window. It was more like a brushing. You know, like a dog or a cat trying to alert its owner he wants to come back in the house. Then that faint whisper was there again saying, Mama, Mama, let me in. Then she replied, Button? That's what she called it. Button? Is that you? Boy, he could answer good. She was at the front door and I was right there beside her. Though I was scared, I was ecstatic at getting the chance to be able to tell my mom and my brother I saw my daddy for the first time. I wanted to see what he would look like aside from those pictures that were all in through and about the house. This was going to be my defining moment. She opened the door and no one was there. All there was was a set of taillights speeding off into the night. My grandmother, not sure as what or who it was for certain, immediately shut the door. She then began to lock every lock in the house. And suddenly the phone rang. So my godmother asked if everything was okay with Button. He had just left her house also knocking on the window. When she went to let him in, he was gone. This concerned my grandmother now. My grandmother had a remedy for situations like this. Pray. Once she discussed things with God, everything was going to be all right. My dad often came home in the wee hours of the night, as I said, to my grandmother's dismay. So she thought nothing of it. We decided we'd go say some prayers and go on back to bed. A few hours passed when my grandmother heard a car pull up. Thinking it was my dad, she got right up and went to the door. I stayed in the bed this time. She said, we're going to surprise him when he comes in and sees you in my bed. As she opened the door, she saw the same taillights pull away. Not recognizing the type of car it was or with the presence of mind to get the license plates, after the car turned the corner, she heard that faint whisper again. Mama, Mama, I'm down here. 
She replied, what? He murmured, here, yeah, mama, down here on the sidewalk. Well, my grandmother had a little walkway from the carport that you could see from the street. But from the door where she stood, you couldn't see that part of the sidewalk in which he lay. Shrubbery and bushes camouflaged the boot. She stepped outside the door into the mysterious midnight, took another step down, and found a one and only son, shot in the stomach, murmuring in his own blood. Never making a sound, my grandmother rushed back into the house, got a few towels, stepped her son to his feet, and made their way to the car. She laid my daddy in the back seat, came back into the house soaked in his blood. Still without ever saying a word, she got me in the sheet and placed me in the front seat and wrapped me up. Without me ever looking into the back seat to get that world famous glimpse of my daddy, I set my four year old butt in the front seat, curious. I listened to my daddy moan and murmur, I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get him. While my grandmother drove trembling, not to the hospital, but to my aunt's house to drop me off. What was my grandmother thinking? He was shot, not me. But that's how I went down. That's all I remember about that. Six weeks later, my daddy died from pneumonia, a secondary condition from the bullet wound in his stomach. He had gone into a coma. But before he went, all he said with anyone was, I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. He never did. My grandmother was there January 5th, 1971, when he took his last breath. He died holding her hand, and she ain't never let go.